So before we move forward, let's have an introduction about what we are going to learn in this section. So first, we will structure our app so that we can keep important and related data in a separate file. Next, we will understand what are CSS variables and how it helps us create a scalable website that we can customize very easily. Third, we will understand advanced pre-reset. So far, we have been doing simple resets like margin zero and padding zero and box sizing border box. But now, I will show you how you can pre-reset some of the default styles of your markup that you don't need to restyle again and again. Then we will write reusable classes and after all of that we will create the responsive website with whatever we have learned so far. After that we will create a github account. Don't worry, you don't have to worry much about github at this point as I will be deep diving in github when we will reach to that point. And finally we will host our website with github so that you can get a URL and share it with your friend so that they can see your website live. Also anyone with an internet connection around the world can see it. So with that being said let's get straight to the coding. Let's have a look at the project overview. Here is the website that we are going to code up by the end of this section. With an elegant and interactive user interface this fully responsive website had some amazing features that allow us to navigate it with ease. So let me show you. First of all, we have a very simple yet defining navbar here, which on being clicked, take us to the required section where the layout has been created in such a way that explains the purpose of that particular section. If you navigate little down, we have a fixed background image that scrolls up and down with the content. And then, we have some nice grid layouts that is allowing us to visit the new arrival section with an amazing hover effect. And if we navigate a little more down, we have this beautiful form which we can fill to receive the notification about the products. We have some famous brand logos down here as well. And after all of that, we have this four column footer with some nice copyright text in the very bottom. Now all of this is fully responsive. So now let's have a look at that as well. So if I minimize the browser window to the mobile side, this is the interface we end up having. We have a beautiful toggle bar here, which on clicking expands the menu list. And after clicking a particular link, it will take us to that particular section. So this is the website that we are going to code up by the end of this section. So let's get started. Okay, so let's have a basic overview of what CSS variables are. So CSS variables or custom properties allow us to reuse values throughout our style sheet. They increase the efficiency, reduce code duplication and helps us create amazing and well maintainable app that we can customize anytime as per our choice. So now let's see how we can actually use CSS variables. So I'm on a new code pen. So I'm going to write a div and inside div, I'm going to just create one anchor tab and not tab, it's tag. So here I will write click me. Great. And now come on, click me. It should show up. Yeah, great. So click me is here. Great. Now let's see how we can use CSS variables. So you can see by default, we have this blue color which is looking not not looking bad but still suppose we want to customize it so how can we do it using variables so first of all in the css section what we do is that we write a colon i will explain you why and then we write root and then we open a code block here we define some variables now what are variables variables are a container which stores some kind of data when we will move to the javascript section we will learn about variables a uh, bit in advance you can say we have lots of things like variables then we have variable reassignment which is also called variable mutation but all of this in the javascript section i don't want to confuse you but here let me explain you what is variable see whenever we want to use variable 
and I'll explain you how can we use variable okay I'm just telling you what is variable whenever you suppose you want to create a variable you create that variable inside this keyword here so you first write this is pseudo selector you write a colon and then you write root now when you write root whatever goes inside this is accessible throughout the markup which means that this code is accessible from any container okay so if it is it is very deep down nested even that element that chil children that children or that element can access the values that are declared here okay so let's see how we can use variable so first what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create some colors so i will write primary dash color and let's go with what red yeah let's go with red or uh, orange red orange red great now let's create one more mm, i will name it gray and just gray and then i will take uh, yellow no but green and i will name it green now let, let me explain you what is going on here so whenever you create a variable you start by two dash and then you write the name of the variable okay you cannot have a space here okay you need to separate the value with some comma or you can use underscore but to be more precise we use uh, dash so dash dash primary dash color so this is our primary color now let's see how we can use this so here i will select the anchor tag or uh, yeah anchor tag we'll select the anchor tag here i will write color now if i write color red obviously it will turn red but suppose we want to use it very you can say we can use we want to use variable okay so here we can write where and then we can write the name of this variable so if i copy this and if i paste this here Hmm. can you see this this is this this turn to orange red anyway so that's how we use variable we first declare the property that we want to use so we are using color property and the value that is here so value is coming from variable so we have written where and then we have written dash dash primary dash color and that's how we have used variable now variable can be used as a margin as well suppose we want to have a margin so we can write margin and mm, 10 ram from all side and now let's give the div a margin of 10 ram so what we'll do is that we'll write margin and the margin will come from this margin variable here so if i write margin <laughs> did you see that we have a 10 ram of margin now suppose uh, if you want to manually change this margin it would be very difficult for you to change margin so what will happen is that suppose you want to in a f in future you want to have an element to to get a margin of 20 ram you just have to change one place so just change here and the element will get a margin of 10 ram 20 ram now if you want 3 ram you can change it here so rather than changing here you just change it at one place and every place uh, the style is applied so suppose just delete this and write blue see it turned to blue okay so this is very useful and this is margin this is this is not margin but this is uh, what css variables are now suppose we want to increase the font size so we can write the default font size so default font size and here i can write 25 px and now if i want to give the anchor a font size we can write font dash size where dash dash default dash font dash size and then that's it now let's see if uh, yeah i need two dashes here okay so let's copy this and let's paste this here and we get that default font size now in future if you want to change it to 85 just change it one place and it will reflect here so this is the power of css variable and we are going to write some advanced variable in when when we'll create our project structure so this was just a basic overview of what css variables are now a lot to know a lot to discuss in one of the next videos so see you there okay so in the start of the section i have got a starter file for you go ahead and download that that is a zip file you need to unzip it and after that open that starter file in your favorite code editor in my case it is vs code now when you will open that starter file you will end up having similar interface as me here we have structured our project in a very expressive way everything is in a personal folder this is the structure that you should follow when you will create your project separate your multiple file with a multiple folder by doing this you will have better control over your project management here you can see i have three main folders you can ignore vs code 
this is the default settings that the VS code has automatically created for me. So other than this, I have three main folder CSS that contains the styling image that contains all the images that we are going to use in this website. And then we have a JavaScript folder that is going to contain the, the scripts that we are going to create the menu bar, the toggle menu bar for our website. So here is the main folder CSS, image, JavaScript. These three separates our code base into a personal folder. Now this is the markup that we are going to have the starter markup you can say this is the starter markup so we just have one index.html and then we have three folders subfolders that is going to contain every important code that is related to this markup now we also have one more file that is node.txt we are going to write some important stuff that what we are going to create at what particular particular position that's why we have this notes.txt okay so this is the overall structure that i wanted to talk about that i wanted to give you uh, and a uh, basic introduction about the structuring of our project okay now let me show you one thing if you open the css and style.css my css file is empty but in your case it will not be empty there will be lots of variables and lots of default stylings even maybe google what uh, you can say font import there might be font import so you don't have to worry a lot about that i'll be explaining all of this into the next video so this was a very short video related to how you can structure your project all right so now let me explain you what you are saying and why you are saying so let me just close this sidebar here you can also press ctrl b or command b to quickly close okay now the first thing here you are saying is the import url something like this so this is google font so what are google font suppose we want to use some different types of font in our website so we can include google font in our website so let me show you just go to any of the browser tab and here i will search what google fonts yes why not and now click the first link here and the font that we are using is called poppins and here i will search for poppins and in the search suggestion here you can see poppins click this and now go below and let me show you see it is weight so weight at the rate of 0 700 colon 300 so we have two weight first 700 and 300 so let me explain you what's going on here uh, can you notice the difference see this is the lightest version then some dark dark and then the bold and we have some bold it is going upward so first the lowest you can say thin the most thin and we have some thick here okay so we have two types of fonts the poppins fonts the lightest version is of 300 and the mm, the thickest version is of 700 yeah 700 so how do we include this what we do is that we click this here select this style and then select let's add one more so you can add as much as you want we have 31 300 and then we will select the 700 mm, 700 great and now uh, we can include google fonts with two ways first we'll have to copy this link and come here and paste this in the index.html somewhere here okay and the second thing is that you can import this so i'm going to do import okay so just click import and here from here to here copy this much okay don't copy this entire code here just copy from here to here copy this and then come here in the style section and paste this here so if you paste this see we have no difference okay so this is google font so we have important we have imported google font here and then we have some variables out here that i'll be explaining you in the next video okay okay so now here you can see we have variables and reusable css properties so these are some variables that we have declared and we are going to use this throughout the course so first we have a header height of 3 ram then font semi of 500 or this should have been 300 so just change this to, to 300 because we have just included 300 okay so the semi font is 300 and the boldest font is 700 700 now we have some reusable colors so this is the primary color and this is the primary hover color and then we have some white color dark dark color light and then gray color okay so this is the root also this is the root okay which means that all of this code 
are accessible throughout the file okay so we can access these variables from anywhere in our file so we don't have to manually select some code and then select some tag and then include these things here okay like we don't have to write font bold 300 we just declare a variable and we are going to use it at multiple locations okay so this is variables and reusable css properties very basics and this is reusable colors that we are going to use throughout our journey of creating the website and then here we have some fonts and typography so the body font is poppins okay so the font that we are going to use so poppins is the body font that we are going to use and when this will this this body font will be applied on the markup by default okay and if i show you let me write an h1 here if i write h1 hello save this can you see hello okay so what if i just comment this out if i comment this out now you can see that we have changed we have a font that is not looking like poppins so you can spot the difference pretty clearly okay so this is the difference that i was talking about one is bold another one was not bold so now let's just get rid of this we don't want this let me explain you a little bit more now we have root yeah so i was talking about font poppins so what is this sans serif this is called fallback font suppose anyhow poppins does not get loaded then in that case sans serif will be loaded okay so poppins and then sans serif so this is the fallback font and this is a very basic stylings how you can say there are many developers out there who choose to give a fallback font okay and you should all, always provide a fallback font suppose in any in many cases if if this font doesn't work doesn't load up then we should always be ready with a different font and the sans serif will be there to save us then we have a big font size of 3 ram and then we have h1 font size of 1.5 ram h2 font size of 1.3 ram normal font size a small font size now here is the trick the same from here to here you can see we have same variable but this time this is inside a media query which means this is a uh, min width 768 so these stylings will be applied automatically applied to every the every of the element that will have these variables but this time this very value will be used when the screen width will be more than 768 pixel okay so see on normal screen this value will apply on larger screen that will be above 768 pixel the same variable will have this value apply so normal screen big font size is 3 ram h1 font size is 1.5 ram on bigger screen that is above 768 pixel big font size is 6 ram h1 font size is 2.25 ram and you can read this much as well so you can compare and read this list rest of the three uh, variables as well now we have some margins here so on the root we have declared some margins margin of margin 1 is 0.5 ram margin 2 is 1 ram margin 3 is 1.5 ram and margin 4 of 2 ram then we have some g index you know why g index is for bringing one particular element above other okay so g index g tool tip 10 g fixed 100 and then we have some advanced pre reset so this is what i was talking about see so far we have been doing box sizing border box okay but now what we are going to do is that we are going to write some advanced pre reset yeah so a star everything before everything after should be board box sizing border back box border box and then we have some html that is scroll behavior smooth now don't get confused i will show you what does it mean okay so html scroll behavior smooth let me show you so this is the final version of the website so if you click this see how beautifully it is scrolling us so if i show you did you see that but if i right click inspect and i will bring this little up so that i can show you what does it mean and if i will be able to find out scroll behavior do i have a scroll behavior oh looks like i cannot figure out the scroll behavior scroll behavior mm, no so where can i find out on the main on the body let's check scroll behavior anyway i'm going to show you what a scroll behavior does but if you close the scroll behavior which means if you comment this scroll behavior out and what will happen okay so this is on html okay so html yeah scroll behavior. if i disable this now if i click new did you see that it is straight away taking us to that section okay now if you include a scroll behavior then this effect will be there okay so this is a scroll behavior i hope pretty much clear so on the body we have this much of what variable so margin is variable this one so which means header height so header height is 
थ्री रैम ओके सो थ्री रैम सो मार्जिन ऑन बॉडी इज फ्रॉम टॉप वी हैव थ्री रैम एंड राइट जीरो लेफ्ट जीरो एंड देन बॉटम जीरो इट्स टॉप राइट बॉटम लेफ्ट सो पार्डन मी ओके सो ऑन टॉप वी हैव थ्री रैम ऑफ हाइट ऑन राइट जीरो ऑन बॉटम जीरो ऑन लेफ्ट जीरो नाउ द फॉन्ट फैमिली इज बॉडी डेस फॉन्ट सो दिस बॉडी डेस फॉन्ट पॉपिंस ओके नाउ फॉन्ट साइज इज नॉर्मल फॉन्ट साइज सो फॉन्ट साइज इज वेयर आर यू नॉर्मल नॉर्मल फॉन्ट साइज एंड देन वी हैव द कलर डार्क कलर सो कलर इज दिस वन वेयर आर रिजूजल कलर्स सो कलर इज डार्क कलर ओके सो बाई डिफॉल्ट दीज आर द स्टाइलिंग्स डेट विल अप्लाई ऑन द बॉडी now here we have said every h1 h2 s3 should have a margin of 0 you know by default the browser applies some additional styles to the h1 h2 and s3 uh, and that specifically is margin so we have said we don't want any margin so we have manually said hey everyone every h2 h1 as s3 should have no margin and then rather than styling rather than styling each and every unordered list individually we have just said at this one point that every unordered list should have a margin of 0 padding 0 and list style none because every ul contains a list item okay now every anchor tag should have a text decoration none and color should be dark so color should be dark color dark color this one okay so every anchor tag rather than saying uh, an individual anchor tag so like for example we have a menu link okay so nav link so we'll select nav link and we'll say text decoration none no we don't have to do that just say every anchor tag because by default what you will do is that every anchor tag on your website will be text decoration of none okay you are going to do this one okay so why not do that here right now because we are learning about advanced preset so we can advanced preset every of the default behavior of our tags so that we don't have to manually define styles for them again and again now every image should have a maximum width of 100% and height should be automatically calculated now your reusable classes okay so here what what we'll do is that we will create sections for every of the you can say this is a section this is also a section so we have created a section which is going to have a padding of 3 rem from top to bottom top and bottom and zero from left to right then we have some section section titles so this is section title and these are some section titles these are section titles so we have said section title is going to have a font size of h2 font size and what is what is h2 font size this is h2 font size 1.3 rem and then we have said um, color should be dark color then margin is three way margin so this is top bottom this is center this is left right so something like this okay so where dash dash mb dash 4 Zero and then dash dash and be dash one. Okay, so top and bottom, center, left and right, or what? Looks like I made some mistake, but anyway, you can search what is this three-way margin value is, or should I search right here? So if I search margin three ways, let me show you what does it mean. Sometimes I forget this. Okay, so CSS margin great. If I navigate little down, mm, yeah, margin. margin yeah margin 3 ma if the margin property has three value so three value where are you one and then two and then three so what is this top margin is 25 pixels so this is top margin and then right and left so this is right and left zero and then we have bottom margin is 75 so bottom margin is one okay and then we have section all mm, okay so every section all this section all defines the display size of the block and i will tell you why we have written this so and then we have a font size font weight this is font semi so font weight this is the font weight 300 font weight and then where are you come on come on come on mm -hmm -hmm. uh where are you yeah yeah font size variable small font size font weight font semi 300 and then we have the color so color is dark color light then text align center every text has been aligned to center so you can see the text is aligned to center okay and then we have margin from bottom is dash dash mb dash 2 which means what dash dash mb dash 2 let's see the margin dash dash mb dash 2 1 rem okay so that's it this is what i was talking about we have this bd grid okay so we have this bd grid as well okay so let me explain the bd grid as well so this is the layout that we have created so we have created a layout that has a maximum width of 10 24 pixel display is grid we have the default column of 100% the column gap is 2 rem and then width is calculated by you can say 100% minus 3 rem that is header height then we have margin left and margin right okay so this is the grid layout and uh, i don't think that anything is left here 
now all of this is if, it, if it, it is not making sense to you when I will be writing code related to this I'll be explaining these all things anyway okay now one thing before I move I uh, let me go to the index.html file and here you can see we have a link that is uh, that is a box icons okay so if I show you this is the box icon okay so this is the box icon that we are going to use so how do we include box icons just go to box icons and click the first link here box icons click uses and just navigate to little down and from here copy this link which says uses as a font copy this one and paste that here so if I paste you know new line see both of them are same okay so just paste that and that's how you have included the box icon uh, you, can, you have included box icon now let's click uses again or let's click this home button here and now from here if I search what menu menu so this is you can see this is the menu that we have on our website which you cannot see right now because we will have to just minimize this and let me show you the cart one so you can see the cart here so if I search for what not a cart but cart yes ah, see this is the cart that we are going to use okay now you don't have to use this web component you have to use this font okay and which I will be anyway diving so let's skip this right now for this one okay so we are not going to talk about this one now one thing that I want to talk about is that we are going to follow a mobile first approach which means we are going to build our website for mobile first and then we will expand to design the same website for desktop first okay so this is what I wanted to talk about so you don't have to worry much about this much this this all things here these are nothing but just the variables that we are going to use again and again in order to make our workflow very easy and to avoid all the reusable code that we have been writing so far okay so that's it see you in the next video when we will start creating the header section so we'll create the nav bar okay so see you there okay so now let's write the markup for header so first I'm going to minimize this because we are following a mobile first approach so we will design our website for mobile first now here I will write the header for our website so here I will create a header tag and I'm going to give this a class name of primary header and inside this primary header I'll be having a nav bar which will have a class of nav and then a one more class of bd dash grid and this bd dash grid is this class here this one okay so it will have a maximum width of 10 24 pixel and all the stylings applied to it great now inside nav i will create three divs why let me show you so this is the final version so this entire is the nav okay and then we have one div for the swappinger logo then another div for these nav items you can say nav links and then the icons itself so box icons itself okay so all of them will be in a separate div so first div inside div we just have an anchor tag with a class of nav underscore underscore logo and the name will be swappinger great one more div and this time this div is going to be a nav underscore underscore menu it will also have an id of nav dash menu okay and i will show you what nav dash menu does okay so this id here uh, let me close this one first okay I'll bring it up and here i will create an unordered list that will have a class of nav underscore underscore list and inside this we will have list items with a class of nav underscore underscore item great and then we will have the anchor tag with nav underscore underscore links for now it will not go anywhere so the first one is i think home and we have four like this so home and then what is this featured featured let's check home featured new subscribed home featured new subscribed great here write home here write featured featured here write new and then subscribe subscribe great and we need one more div okay so for box icons 
so div that's it and here we will include some box icons okay so first let's see how it okay so this is how it looks okay so now let's include box icons mm, so let's go to box icons and the first one is card okay let's click card it is already open here i need to maximize this and click font okay so what you have to do go to box icons click this link here and then from here search cart and click this cart click font you don't have to click web component click font copy this one copied and now here paste this and now let's see and here you can see the link now we need one more link not link but what uh, menu we need this menu so click this one and copy this one and now let's paste this here let's see how it shows up so let me just minimize this and let's okay sometime it happens in mozilla firefox great so swapping logo all those menu links and then we have these box icons great now uh, let's give this menu a class not menu but this cart so the cart will have a class of nav underscore underscore cart and this what this is menu so nav underscore underscore toggle okay so this is the cart this is the toggle we will style this we will increase the font size of this of these icons okay right now you can see how small it looks so this is the overall markup for our header okay so first header has a class of primary header and then header wraps a uh, nav bar and then it has a class of bd dash grid so that it becomes a grid template which has a column of 100 percent all the way from left to right and then the column gap of 2 rem from here to here will have a column gap okay and then margin left margin right and displays obviously grid great so then we have a div that is nav underscore underscore logo and then one more div that is nav underscore underscore menu and that's then we have an id of nav dash menu now if you remember in order to turn this a uh, flexbox or grid we need to make the parent container either flexbox or grid and that's why we have wrapped all of these three items these three sub child into a parent so that we can lay out it very easily okay so justify content space between will be will be able to use uh, something like this so come on yeah so we will put this lab uh, this logo into the left side and all of this into, into the right side okay so justify content space between we'll be able to do that okay and yeah nav menu so next up we have nav menu so nav menu is simply this one so if you click this feature there is an id associated with this and if you click it will take you to that section so that's why we have this id so if someone will click to the featured then the link will take us to the featured section okay it means that if you will click this home button it will take you to this nav menu here okay because the home is associated with it uh, and obviously let me quickly show you mm, what do i mean to say okay so that's it now if you didn't understand the last two minutes of the video like i just mentioned this id is related to something when you will click it it will take you here okay then uh, you don't have to worry when we'll collapse and when we'll show the menu this id here particularly is used to create this toggle here this toggle here okay now you must be asking then why did you show me something like this if you click this it will take you here this is related to this button here okay and i will show you when the right time will come so right now you just have to worry about how we can not you don't have to worry about but you have to like think a lot about how the markup has been created because in the next video we'll be styling this markup where are you this markup to create something like this okay so something like this all right so see you in the next video with some with some styles okay and i also already have written some comment here header a styling here okay so in next video we'll start styling our header so see you there okay okay so now let's start designing our nav bar okay so let me close this one i'll come to style.css and here i will select the primary header yes let's select this primary header since it is a class dot selector will be used to select this okay so width is going to be 100 percent we want the width to be 100 percent and the position is fixed so let me show you what do i mean come on and mm, here see when we are scrolling up and down the position is fixed so if i write position come on position 
and this is going to be fixed at where from top this is going to be 0 and from left this is going to be 0 so top 0 left 0 all the way here so this is why we have used positioning and then g index will be 10 g index will be 10 why do we use g index because if g index will not be set to 10 then the content will overflow this so the fashion that you are seeing will be top on the top of the nav bar okay that's why we have used g index or uh, higher than the this content itself that's why we are saying that the nav bar should always be visible and the content should scroll behind that great and let's quickly set the background color this is going to be where dash dash gray dash color gray dash color if i remember it accurately gray dash color okay great gray dash color yes so come on yeah so with 100 percent position fixed top zero left zero g index 10 background color gray and we get it great so this is the very basic style for nav bar now let's write the nav itself so we'll select the nav we'll give it a height of a header height where dash dash header height 3 dam which is 3 dam remember and then we will apply display of flex display of flex to this and by default by applying display of flex it just became a flex container okay so now let's write justify content justify content a space between if i save this great a space between now let's align the items to the center so align items center save this and we get it great now let me minimize this hmm, great now let's make it responsive okay so we don't want to see this one here all right so what we'll do is that we will write a media query that will handle this one so let me show you how do we do that we will first write at the rate of media a screen media a screen s c r e e n and let's go with max width max dash with 768 px and now we will select dot nav underscore underscore menu let me explain you what is this so this nav underscore underscore menu here nav underscore underscore menu should be styled here okay which means that if we are on this screen this should be styled differently and how let's style this so the position should be obviously fixed position is going to be fixed and let's go with the top where dash dash header dash height 3 dm we want here as well and here i will write right of minus 100 percent if i save this now boom we got rid of that but don't worry i will show you why if i say zero we are here now let's give it a height width first let's go with the width of 80 percent 805 percent great 80 percent no not 805 height will be 100 percent save this with 80 percent height 100 percent and let's go with uh, what padding let's give it a padding of 2 ram from all side padding of 2 ram it looks visible if i comment this out yeah you can notice the change here okay so padding 2 ram gets us padding from here so let me do it again see did you see that padding 2 ram and now let's give it a background color of where dash dash white dash color now this white color is not white actually okay so you can spot the difference can you spot the difference did you see that so this is the white color that we are talking about so let's add a transition as well and i'll show you why transition transition point 5 s great and we need one more styling that should be applied to the nav item itself so now let's style the nav item so where are you so the nav items itself so this one these all items so nav underscore underscore item margin should be from bottom where dash dash mb dash what for save this now we have a margin from bottom and now let's style the nav links itself so nav underscore underscore links so the links should have a color of where dash dash dark color and then the font dash weight needs to be where dash dash font dash semi save this great we get it and now let's let's give it a hover effect so nav underscore underscore links colon hover when we come on 
when we hover the link we should get the color to be primary color come on dark just get out of here primary color if I hover over it see we are getting a primary color oh no it's not a primary color but it's primary hover primary hover and now you can see we are getting primary hover so let me show you this is the primary color purple and primary hover is this RGB 19447 and 194 and come on let's go little bottom let's see what else have we to style mm, yeah nav underscore underscore cart so now uh, looks like we are forgetting something nav underscore underscore logo yeah the logo should also be styled so after nav underscore underscore links nav underscore underscore logo nav underscore underscore logo needs to have a font weight of obviously font bold not semi but bold and if I save this see you can spot the difference between both of them okay so and font semi font bold so where are you font semi font bold great now um, what after nav underscore underscore logo we have nav cart and nav toggle so nav underscore underscore cart yes nav underscore underscore cart should have a font size of 1.5 ram 1.5 ram and let's give it a margin from right of where dash dash mb dash 2 and now it has a margin from right of what dash dash mb dash 2 is 1 ram great so we have a margin from right of 1 ram and same styling should be for nav underscore underscore toggle as well c-o-t-o-g-g-l-e yeah so the font size and font size and margin right but let's see no we don't want a margin right but what we want is that let's get rid of this we don't want this one great and yeah we want a cursor to be pointer right now when I hover over it you can see there is no way of clicking it so what we'll do is that we will say cursor is going to be pointer and now if I hover over it can you spot the difference now our mouse is becoming like an uh, hoverable icon so now it is clickable so if you click this then something will happen okay which obviously right now will not happen because we have not added javascript yet when we will add javascript the functionality will be fully clearly visible here okay now let me show you something else now let me create a so class so should be right of zero and if i write zero percent um, and i will show you why we have created this so class okay now if i come here see right of minus right of zero percent okay so suppose we want this nav bar to be hidden so we'll say right of minus 100 percent it is hidden okay so it is hidden sometimes we need to refresh it in order to sometimes it like internet connection fluctuates that's why the box icon hides which just right now happened and did you notice that now if i refreshed it came again now see when i say ra come on right of minus 100 percent what happens is that our nav bar is just here somewhere here which you cannot see so minus 100 percent now if i say zero it is visible so by default it will be 100 percent and with use of javascript we will add right of zero okay so this so class has a right of zero so somehow we will add uh, this class in that javascript javascript code we will use javascript to add this value to incorporate this value at this position and i'll show you how so when you will click this this will turn zero and it will be visible and when we will again click this then this time it will become 100 percent and this is called class list dot add okay so i will show you how that works so after if you click once it will be zero and the uh, navbar will be visible and if you want to shrink this then click this again and it will become minus 100 percent and then this will just get out of the you can say block here okay so that's how you will create a uh, navbar now let's create one more thing mm, let's check what mm, okay now you can see we have an active link here so it is by default purple okay so now let's create this active link so we will create an active class here i will create active class active should have a color of where dash dash primary dash color primary dash color save this primary dash color and i will add what the home is active 
right home is active so i will add that active class here home is active and now let's check okay so i need to see something like this or let me just get that here so right now it is not visible because we have said minus 100 percent zero okay so home is visible okay so home is like you can say bold right here active great now let's just hunt some other properties so that we can check if everything is all right or not so font semi 300 font bold 7 okay everything is working all right the menu where is the menu menu this is menu nav bar everything is working all right so looks like everything is okay so now in next video what we'll do is that we will start styling the home section or okay so we will add the javascript functionality okay so if you click this it will go away if you click this it will come here okay so see you in the next section with mm, this file yeah it will be fun all right so now just open a script.js file because we are going to write javascript now so that when we click this menu here this uh, toggle menu here it will just go away and when we'll click it again it will just show up okay so here uh, let me zoom it a little bit or let me click this close this one okay now you don't have to understand much about this here okay as when we will learn about javascript these things will be very clear to you okay so just write whatever i'm writing now so let's write const here i will create a show menu this show menu will be a function you don't have to understand okay now this function will receive two parameters so toggle id and then the second one is nav id and after this here we will create the value so toggle okay so toggle and this is the what variable that will hold the value for this toggle here where are you where are you toggle and Mm, this one nav menu okay so let's see how we can get this mm, yeah so const toggle document document dot get element by id and that id should be from toggle id okay and then we have the same for nav as well so nav will be document document dot get element by id and here it will be nav id mm, great now after this i will make a if check block here if toggle and nav if toggle and nav then what we'll do is that we'll say toggle dot add event listener and that event listener will be click and once it will be clicked a function will run this function will simply do a class list dot add so nav dot class list dot toggle and then it will toggle this show menu here if i save this let's check okay i need to pass the function okay so so menu should have the toggle id the toggle id is what is the toggle id looks like i did not give given the toggle and id or have we okay so this toggle should be given an id so this should be this should be nav dash toggle so nav dash toggle great now let's come come here and here what i'll do is that i'll write nav dash toggle and then the what nav dash menu so this is the toggle id and this is the nav id now const toggle equals to going to get this value from this one and nav id will going to going to get this value from nav menu and then if toggle and nav then toggle dot add event listener click when this menu will be clicked okay by default nothing is happening right here why let's check js slash script dot js so so menu equals to toggle id const everything is working fine so menu nav dash toggle nav dash menu and so click <laughs> toggle and nav okay so nav id is working toggle id is working so sometimes it happens you don't understand how one thing is why one thing is happening and one thing is not happening so let's check let's see where did something wrong happen so so menu is going to get nav dash toggle so let's see mm, id is nav dash toggle and then we have nav dash menu so nav dash menu okay and looks like we have the error here 
so we forget to say minus 100% so if I write minus 100% now it will be gone okay and now if I click this see it is coming here okay so if I click this one ID is going and if I click this one ID is coming okay so this is the functionality that I was talking about so see just with the line of just with 13 lines we get that uh, what we get that functionality here and now let's write remove menu as well okay so here I will write remove so let me show you what do I mean and you can see when I click this menu here it just goes off click this menu it goes off but in our case if I click this menu it is not going off okay so here I will write what remove menu and here again I will create a const nav links if it is not making sense to you obviously it will not make sense to you document.query selector all I will explain all of this in details when we will learn about JavaScript section so links so now we are holding the value of nav links into this variable now from here I will create a function called link action link action link action and here I will check the active link active link action so nav links dot for each for every element that is this one so class list dot remove and this time remove the active class active class and here uh, what so I will write this dot class list will toggle okay so add active it might be very boring you must be understanding that this is boring but don't worry I'll explain you trust me I'll explain you you don't have to understand anything right now so now I'll remove menu mobile so I will remove menu mobile and how do we remove menu mobile mm, yeah let's create one more cost not cost but const cost we are not dealing in profit and loss so nav menu equals to document dot document dot get element by ID and the ID will be from nav dash menu and then we'll say nav menu dot class list dot remove and let's remove the so class and we don't need a semicolon okay yeah even if you write a semicolon or don't write a semicolon it's uh, no problem okay now what will do that nav uh, we will write nav where are you so come on just, yeah nav links so this one so nav links dot for each n is that is n dot let's add an add event listener which is going to be click and the second variable is going to be link action okay so if I save this come here paste it is getting away okay so see now let me explain you what is happening here so when we want to uh, remove not remove remove action so we are holding nav link the value on this nav link is coming from this code here and I'll explain you when we learn about DOM section of JavaScript then we are creating a function that is a um, link action okay so here I can say my link action more semantic my link action so my link action first we are catching an active link action so what we are saying that every link action dot for each and dot class list dot remove so wherever we have active class wherever we have so class just remove that and put an active class here and then this dot class list dot add active class so first we are removing and then we are adding and then we are creating one more remove menu while and then here we have const nav menu we are tracking the nav menu so this nav menu where are you this entire nav menu here okay so we are saying document dot get element by id so it has an id so nav dash menu nav dash menu nav dash menu dot class list dot remove so so this so is removing and this so is getting and that's why we are changing that's how we are changing this value here and that is resulting into something like this so when you click featured it is just going away and we are clicking new it is going away and one thing i noticed right here is there is some problem in our code and what is that you can see that this text is little less bold and this text is little highly bold so let's counter this one in the next video okay 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 so I just realized one problem here that the font is little bold here okay so what you have to do is that you just have to change from 700 you just have to write a 500 here so just write 500 and now if I save this see we are now having the 500 font okay so what happened is that when we included the font we forget to incorporate the 500 <laughs> instead we incorporated 300 now there is no problem with that I can also use the 300 and since but it is little 
less thin okay so let's see yeah little too thin okay so we are going to use 500 so let's change this to 500 okay so everything should be working fine okay so this was a quick video about the problem that we are getting related to the font weight okay so after nav bar that we created just now after nav bar let's create this home section here okay so what we are going to do is that we are going to write the markup first okay so after header after header not inside header i am going to create a main section and inside this i am going to create a section that is going to have a class of home and an id of home as well and then inside section we have uh, what home container so something like that okay so let's see uh, a div with a class of home underscore underscore container and a class of bd dash grid as well we want it to make uh, we want it to be a grid as well so now inside this we want to create one more div that will hold our data so home underscore underscore data and then inside this we want to have an h1 that would be home underscore underscore title and then here we will write the text so fashion got a new style so fashion and then br tag because we want a line break br so something like this br and then we have a span inside the span we have got a new a style save this fashion got a new style great so fashion got a new style and after this we have and we have an anchor tag so now let's create an anchor tag and this is going to have a class of button and this will go to featured f e a t u r e d and i'll explain you why this featured here here we have go shopping great and we have go shopping let's see if we have something else or not oh uh, yeah we have an arrow here so this is an entity html entity so how do we create an html entity we just write the entity name so in this case it is an arrow not an arrow but it is an arrow right arrow so we will write ampersand r a r r r a r r means right arrow right arrow and similarly if you write u a r r it means up arrow and we have l a r r and we have a uh, bottom r r uh, it's, it's down dar so down arrow but we want a uh, right arrow so we'll go with right arrow okay so after that we have an image so after that we have an image so after div div home underscore underscore data we have home underscore underscore title and then we have a featured that takes that is a button which one clicked take us here now here i will create an image tag that is going to have a class of home underscore underscore img the source is going to be home slash not slash but not home but img slash home dot png so this one so img slash home dot png this is okay so let me close this one and close this one as well save this and here you go so this is we have completed the markup for our home page and next video we will style this home page okay so let's write some comments mm, yeah home page a styling so in next video we'll start a styling home page okay so now let's start styling this home section so first i will select the home class itself and i will give it a background color of white uh, not like this where dash dash white dash color save this mm, it might not be visible but we are having something that is white dash color so let me show you where are you my favorite color section white dash color so fa 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 okay so this is the white color that we are having here and then let's select the home container itself okay so home container itself 
is going to have a height that is going to be calculated and it's 100 vh minus the header height so dash dash h e a d e r header height so let me explain you so the overall height of this is going to be from here to here but since we already have three ram for the header what we are going to do is that we are going to minus this three ram from the actual 100 vh of the height of the container okay so that's why we have calculated it manually now next up we will write home underscore underscore data home underscore underscore data and we will give it a padding dash top of 6 ram save this we got a padding of top of 6 ram and it's something all right yeah yeah okay so let me just adjust it and now let's select the home title itself so home title so home title will be aligned self so align self to be center and let's increase the font size I'm going to go with dash dash big font size so big font size if i save this mm, great something similar to this and big font size big font size we are getting it we are getting closer to it uh, line height so line height is going to be 1.2 line height 1.2 great and then we are going to have a letter spacing letter spacing of 0.5 rem let's see uh, we are almost close so 0.5 rem and then let's give it a margin of bottom of 4 rem a huge and mm, there is something wrong or no no wrong so let's check okay everything is all right we need to just you know what we need to shrink this one okay so we need to minimize the uh, font size of this one we need to decrease the font size so come on where are you mm, button okay so we'll be styling button but we have this span and br as well okay so let's counter this one so now home underscore 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 title and the span that is after this so the span should have a font size of dash dash h1 font size so let's see great and then what we'll do is that we will give a display of inline dash block since this is a span and inline element so we'll make it a inline block and then we'll apply the margin of top of one rem let's check yeah the next thing let's style this button okay so now we will style the button so but let me check so before button let's style this home so i'll select home underscore underscore img let's check the class yeah home underscore underscore img so home underscore underscore img should be positioned not relative but absolute which means it will just come out of document flow and now i want the right of zero and bottom just get it here bottom of zero let's see yeah right zero bottom zero and then width i'll set the width to be my manual 260 pixel and if i maximize and minimize see the image is rightly centered here okay which means position absolute right zero bottom zero with 260 pixel now okay sorry this should have been this one okay not this one that was the final version so right now you can see this is also behaving same and na 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 let's get it for the button what do we have next button yeah so let's get this one so b u t t o n so let's style the button so first button should be displayed in line dash block and then let's give it a background color of primary color primary color primary color we need a padding as well so first let's change the color to dash dash white color and then we need the padding so padding of what one rem one rem what if i go with two rem it's too much so one rem okay padding one rem and font size okay so next we need to change the font size to where dash 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 a small font size save this a small font size we get it and we will increase the font weight so font weight to be where font semi so 500 
and then we will give it a border dash radius uh, 50px not 50px but 15px and 20px let's see let's compare no 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 not 15 but what about 12 mm, 10 uh, yeah 10px okay so border radius 10px and one thing I noticed here is that this should be capital so uh, go shopping something like this great so now we have button that is created successfully now let's create the hover effect as well so button colon when someone hovers this what we are going to do is that just background color should be changed to primary hover so primary hover if I save this if I hover over it see we have successfully created the home page okay so this is the final version and this is our version which I, we are starting okay so fashion got a new style and image is perfectly positioned right here next up let's see we have this section to create okay so next we will write the markup and then after we will style this okay so still inside main let me write a comment here here I will write home section let's just go with this so home section and uh, where are you home section styling and whatever will be next will be written here and will be written here as well okay so see you in the next video okay so after home we are having a collection section so let's create collection so collection and here I'm going to have one more section that is going to be name collection collection and then a section as well collection section and inside this we are going to have a div that will be called collection collection underscore underscore container and also a class of bd dash grid and inside this we are going to create a collection box so collection underscore underscore box and after collection box we have image so image then we have the title and then link okay so collection image so let's create an img dot collection underscore underscore img the img is going to we are going to get it from img slash man backpack img slash backpack man dot png if i save this great we get it okay now after this one we have the text itself okay so we are going to contain this into a data so collection underscore underscore data so let me show you uh, where are you this data this data is inside another div so collection underscore underscore data the first thing here we have is an h2 with collection title so collection underscore underscore title the title is inside a span so a span so the first thing we are going to give it a class so a span collection underscore underscore sub title okay so collection underscore underscore subtitle and here we are going to write man and then after man we are going to write a br tag inside this and after br tag we will write simply backpack if i save this man backpack great and after let me just what mm, we ran out of space okay so now after this we have an anchor tag so h2 an anchor tag and this anchor tag is going to be called collection underscore underscore view and this anchor tag will lead us to nowhere just some text i will write view collect Sun. if I save this great this is an anchor tag man backpack view collection okay and now what we are going to do is that we are going to just duplicate the collection box okay so we have created the markup we are going to duplicate this okay so from here shift option and down arrow and we duplicated this now just cut this image from here and paste it after this so now if I saw Mm, and we also need to change the image but first let me show you why I did this okay so in our 
final version you can see we have this image here we have this text here and then we have this text and then this image so this image here this text here and then we have this text here and then we have this image in last okay so now let's what what is next to done mm, yeah let's change this this one okay so this is backpack woman save this and we get it so this is the markup that we have created for our collection section okay so first we have the collection and then the we have section style section that this the class that we created uh, you must remember this one okay so the collection container then we have the bd grid then we have the collection box which holds the data and then collection data which holds the internal data these all data so this is data and then we have the title collection title h2 subtitle man backpack and then we have the same data repeated here as well okay so first let's analyze this one so h2 collection underscore underscore title inside h2 we have a, a span we have a span that is called collection subtitle that is a man and when it is closed we open a br tag and after br tag we created uh, this text here we written we wrote just this text here so backpack and the same thing is repeated here as well okay so this is the markup for collection and now let's come here and we'll be styling collection in next video collect some section collection section okay so now let's style collection section in next video so now let's style the collection section so the first thing that we are going to style is the collection container because this is a grid container you can see bd dash grid so we are going to select the collection container and we are going to give it a row gap row gap of 2 ram 2 ram and let's check okay it is not visible right now but we will make it visible very soon so now let's select the collection box itself so collection box where are you collection box so the collection box should be display flex collection box should be display flex justify content is justify content is a space between save this okay nothing happens okay <laughs> you can see that the text is here okay so the text is flowing in the left right okay now next up let's align the items to center and then give it a padding of not like this but p a double d i n g padding of from top zero and left right 1.5 ram and then what we'll do is that let's check we have some background color gray color something like that yeah we have the background color of gray so we will apply a background color of gray color save this we get that can you see this yeah we have this background color of gray and now let's apply the transition as well because when we will hover over them we want to have some basic styles and we want the animation to be smooth see how smooth it is okay so that's why when we'll hover over them we want a smooth animation next up we will select the collection underscore underscore box for the hover effect so box colon hover and here we are going to use a transform property now what does transform property do it allow us to transform one element so here we are saying transform translate y which means when we will hover over them just push it into the y direction y axis okay and how much minus 5 ram and save this see when we are hovering over them it is just pushing itself to minus 5 minus 0.5 ram upwards okay now the image is little very big not little but very big so collection image should be width of 100 px that's it and we get it and collection image is 100 pixel and now let's select the collection title itself so collection title should have the font the size of where um, dash dash h2 dash font dash size save this get it now line height should be 1.2 we got it this one as well so let's select collection title and yeah that's it uh, not that's it by the way 
I can see we have multiple things to do as well so the first thing here uh, the color is little bit changed okay so let's do something as well so margin bottom let's apply the margin bottom and the margin bottom how much margin bottom do we need dash dash mb dash 2 will do the job for us so dash dash mb dash 2 so dash dash mb dash 2 we are having margin okay so here you can see we have the margin great now text transform to be uppercase text transform uppercase and font weight is going to be a where font weight font semi so semi font weight font semi if i quickly do the bold one it looks very ugly so we are going to go with semi okay so font semi and now let's select the subtitle as well so mm, where are you this one collection subtitle so dot collection subtitle should have a font size of what h2 font size yeah h2 font size or this is a subtitle so why h2 this would be a small font size so a small font size a small font size line height is going to be or uh, looks like we are making some mistake here we by default the collection subtitle is man backpack is going to be the same okay no, no no we don't want this font size okay so we don't want font size because what we want is that we just want the style to be changed and the color so we will write font dash size uh, not the size but font dash a style is going to be where dash 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 a small font size font style is small font size uh, looks like we are not having the same thing here okay so let's just change the color so color where and dash dash not this one but the subtitle subtitle should be dark color okay so dark dash color let's check it the subtitle is subtitle is dark color okay so dark color light it's not dark color so dark color light and i can also see that this one is colored gray okay so the title let's check mm, yeah the title is gray and a small font size man backpack and font if i just change the size let's see no i don't want the size but style should be a small font size okay now next up we have the collection view itself so let's select first let's check we are having the same style okay so next up uh, font what there is something that is not looking correctly and we are having font weight problem so wait we will write font dash weight where and here i will write dash dash semi let's check if it works or not sorry not like this but font dash semi and now we got that okay so font dash semi okay so font weight of semi to the collection title itself and then the subtitle as well so where are you where are you collection subtitle man man so font subtitle great now let's select the view itself where are you view collection this view so view collection because this is going to have a text decoration of underline but before that uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to increase the increase the font size and then change the color so font dash for font and t dash size font size is going to be where dash dash a small font size and then we will change the color to be dark light so color where dash dash dark color light get it and then when we hover over it collection view colon hover let's check what stylings do we have when we hover yeah underline so you know how do we do that we just say text decoration underline so we will say text decoration underline if i save this we get it okay so text decoration underline it is working perfectly okay so that's it this was collection section and what do we have next this is the final version okay so feature section next up we'll create the feature section so after this one 
we will create feature section and in the styles feature section a styling so see you there okay so now let's write the markup for our feature section so here we have the feature section and we have few items here okay so now let's write the markup for our feature section so inside main I'm going to create a section that is going to have a class of section and it is going to have a class of featured as well and an ID of featured why an ID because when we will click this featured it will take us to that section so if you click the featured here it will take you to that feature okay so home featured new subscribed and home featured new subscribed by the way this is the final version where are you come on just go away so this is the final version and this is our version that we are creating here okay so now we will create the feature section so inside this we are going to create an h2 where are you the final so we have an h2 and then we have a link so first an h2 that is going to have a class of section title section dash title not like this h2 dot section title h2 dot section dash title this title is going to be featured product featured pro duct let me show you what this section title does so let's come to style.css section dash title so text align center with all of these properties okay so section title so let's see how it renders okay so okay in the markup here say uh, the starting file yeah featured product is here in the middle and after this we have an anchor tag okay so let's create an anchor tag so an anchor tag that is going to have a class of section all and this is going to take us nowhere and this is view all if I save this view all view all a needs to be capital okay so view all and after this we have the featured container featured container which will hold all of our individual items okay so again one more section section or no we should not create section inside section because section itself is referred to that we are creating a particular section here we'll create div because div stands for division so featured underscore underscore container featured underscore underscore container and we will also give this a class of bd dash grid and inside container we have these items here okay so first we'll create one div for featured product f e a t u r e d underscore underscore product so this is the individual product okay so first featured container that is also a grid grid container and then we have the featured product and after this we will create individual box so f e not like this dot f e a t u r e d featured underscore underscore box so this one single unit is featured box which holds our data for image as well as this data so first here i will create a featured new so this is the new that shows that this is the newest item so i will create a div that will tell us the f that will just give us give us a tag that will say new so n e w where are you okay so starting file great we are getting almost done and after this we have an image right so div class feature underscore underscore new and after this we have the image and let's give this image the class so class of featured underscore underscore img and the source is img slash feature one dot png and let's check we get it so now what we'll do is that we will write some of the data so let me show you this data here okay so we are going to write data outside of the featured box okay so outside of the feature box we are going to create a featured data section 
featured underscore underscore data that is going to hold the featured name itself h3 dot featured underscore underscore name this is the headphone headphone one black if I'm right headphone one black and then we have the price itself so featured price and this price is going to be an a span so a span dot f e a t u r e d not slash but dot featured underscore underscore price dollar thirty three dollar thirty three dollar thirty three grade and let's see okay so this is our one feature here okay we need four of them right where the final version one two three four we need four of them so feature one feature two feature three feature four so we will copy this feature box here or feature box contains one particular item okay so the feature product so this one let's copy this four times one two three and the first one is already here okay so now let's change the feature one to feature true just get out of here feature three this is feature four I oh, need to save this if I save this feature one feature two feature three feature four now we just need to change the text so first one is headphone one black second one is speaker home connected with 83 so this one is speaker home connected 83 then we have Apple AirPods speaker home connected here Apple AirPods and how much does it cost one two three so one hundred twenty three dollars and then we have a smart watch f9 so a smart watch f9 let's just stick to a smart watch f9 okay and this has a price of ninety nine dollar save this we are almost done okay so we are having the image here now in next section we will style all of this okay so see you in the styling section all right so now let's style the featured section here so the first thing that we are going to style is the featured container itself so we are going to select the featured container and we are going to give it a row gap of 2 RAM if I save this okay it is not visible but if I just give a larger value to it, to it. Uh, now you can see there is some space here okay and it will be crystal clear when we will give the background color okay so when we will apply the background color it will be crystal clear so now let's see what is next up so the individual box itself not box but the container so featured product so this one this entire data here okay so now let's select the feature product and we are just going to give it a transition so that when we will hover over it 0.3s right 0.3 oh come on transition is 0.3s great transition 0.3s when we'll hover over it we'll have some effect like this one see when we'll when we are hovering over it we are getting this like the product container featured product container itself shifting it is just translating into y direction with with 0.5 ram okay so now let's apply the hover value product underscore not underscore but colon colon hover transform translate y and minus 0.5 ram save this let's check this one and we get it next featured box individual box so featured box it is going to be position relative and we are going to write display flex I will show you why display flex because we want this box to be displayed flex let me show you in the markup here see this is the parent this is the child we want these to tie these two child to be in 
to be perfectly placed inside this parent that's why we apply the parent or display of flex so display flex and justify content not flex and but center so we want this entire box this entire box to be always center so see it will always be center here okay and then we just give it a background color of gray color save this and we get it okay and now if i increase the row gap from 20 rem now you can see that we are having a row gap of 20 rem okay so this is the column gap from here to here and this is the row gap okay now let's decrease this to only 2 rem next up we will select the featured underscore underscore new so featured underscore underscore new and now let's see what we need to do here so this new section should be placed perfectly here and remember how do we place a, an element inside a relative parent so this parent is relative featured box is the parent which is relative and in order to place this new item so that this, this new item will treat this box as its parent we just have to say position of absolute and now we will say write zero let's see write zero and top zero right zero top zero background color is the primary one so primary color save this we get it and we need some padding so padding of 0.5 rem from top and bottom and 2 rem 1 rem 1 rem from left right and we need to change the color as well so 0.5 rem and mm, 1 rem yeah let's change the color uh, first font size so font size is going to be where dash dash a small font size mm, if we are correctly getting that one and the color should be not dark color but white color white color if I save this and we get it okay now next up we'll select the data itself okay but before data let's analyze something uh, what are the things that we need to style now let's check one this one and this one right now it is not in the center so let's put this and let's actually style this okay so featured underscore underscore data text text align center centered and now featured name itself featured name let's see featured name where are you featured name mm. Mm, yeah featured name this one okay so the featured name featured name what is the styling that is applied to it the color is changed okay so featured name color is changed some text transform will be applied it will be applied to make it capitalize uppercase so first let's write uh, text transform so text transform uppercase what else do we need we need uh, font size or let's catch this one so text transform uppercase the color is little changed featured name here let's decrease the font size first the where dash dash normal font size and if I see we have too much margin here okay so what we'll do we will write the margin from bottom margin from bottom is mb-1 save this one and we are almost done now let's select the value itself so price featured underscore underscore price so featured underscore underscore price it needs to be the color let's see where are you color is little dark gray dark gray light okay so dark color light what was the name dark color light dark color light dark color light yes dark color light dark color light come on just let me get down dark color light save this one we get it we need to increase the font weight 
so font weight is going to be bold so font weight where dash dash font dash bold and now let's see okay so not bold but semi so semi bold was too much mm, we get it we are almost here not here but we are almost done okay so that's feature section so next let's see what is the next section we have this background and then we have some new arrival with these stylings and then we have this input bar logo and then the footer itself okay so all of this coming up next so see you there all right so now let's write the offer markup here so offer section so it is going to be a section as well section with offer and section as class and let's check inside section we have this one this thing which is offer background so dot offer underscore underscore bg which holds our offer data offer underscore underscore data and then div that is going to hold our title so offer underscore underscore title this title is going to be a special offer and after this we have this text here okay so this is the paragraph so p dot offer underscore underscore description and this description is a special offer for women if i'm right a special offer discounts for women clients only so let's copy and paste that one here save this and where are you yeah now we need a background image so background image is here and no we don't have to insert background image here we will insert that using the background url that we learned in the css section so we just have a button here so swap now let's give this button a class offer button so offer button or let's just give it a class of button okay because we want to be precise and see when we applied the button we have we have the style for button somewhere here as well so that's why that styling is getting applied here so that is also one of the features of reusable you can say classes okay so reusable classes pretty much working here perfectly now let's style the offer section here i will write offer and first i will select the offer bg or like not like this one but offer underscore underscore bg small not capital and here i will write background and background is going to be an url and url we are going to get from dot dot slash img slash offer dot jpg and here i will write no dash repeat because by default images repeat and then we'll write center slash cover so that it will cover itself in the center okay let's check yeah get it and we will we'll just align all the text so text align center and all the lines all the texts are in center now let's select offer underscore underscore data itself where are you data offer underscore underscore data so we will give it a padding of 3.5 rem from top to bottom and 0.25 rem from left right and we get it we are getting it and then the background color should be rgba rgba okay so 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 so that we can have a dark overlay over it okay see this is the this one this alpha channel so if you just reduce this it will be reduced as well so we want 0 0.5 great and then let's increase the font weight font weight where dash dash font semi not bold but semi save this we get it we need to change the color as well so color or should i increase the font size so font dash size we are going to increase the font size h1 font size dash dash h1 font size and mm, too much offer underscore underscore data okay let's not increase the font weight as well as font size here but we'll do that in the particular section all regarding to this data as well because we have we have classes for those 
paragraph and div as well so we will style them there so for now just change the color for let's go with white simple why to always use css variables okay also we can use this where dash dash white dash color but here i'm just going with white okay next up we have the offer underscore underscore title and then we have let's copy this one offer underscore underscore title and then after this we have offer underscore underscore description offer underscore underscore description and that's it so offer underscore underscore title let's give this title a font dash size I told you we will be styling that here so where dash dash h1 dash font size we get it and now letter spacing letter spacing is going to be 0.2 ram 0.2 ram mm, get it letter spacing 0.2 ram and it is capital yes it is capital so we need to text transform capital so text transform uppercase not capital and now let's give it a font weight as well this is going to be have a font of semi so font this one semi save this and we get it and last but not the least we have offer underscore underscore description margin dash bottom for where dash dash mb dash three if i save this we are having the margin from bottom if i comment this out see can you see the difference in the both of this is the final version and this is our version so we need to give it a margin from bottom so that we can have a space between the paragraph and the button and then and then let's give it a sp letter spacing of 0.2 ram as well okay so letter spacing to the title this one and letter spacing letter spacing to the description as well okay uh, no i don't want to save this so this is the final version and this is our version okay so we are almost done so this was offer section so next up let's see what have we got next special arrival section new arrival so here i will write a comment new arrivals and here as well new come on new arrivals okay so next up we will write the markup for new arrivals and then we will style it so see you in the next video okay so now let's write the markup for new arrival section so here i'm going to write section that is going to have a class of section as well as a class of new and then an id of new and now here i will have just an h2 if i remember yeah an h2 and then an anchor tag so h2 dot section title dash section title here we will write new arrival and then after this we have an anchor tag that is section all so section dash all which will take us nowhere here i will again write view all and we get it so see we had the same feature here as well so feature product and then we have new arrival here and after an anchor tag what have we got the, the box itself so now we will create a container called new underscore underscore container and we have a class of grid as well okay because this is a grid container inside this we have new underscore underscore box container box and then here i have img that is going to be class of new underscore underscore img the source is going to be select img slash new one if i save this one we get the bag here and after bag after bag we have this anchor here okay so let's see after bag we have an anchor so we are going to wrap that anchor inside a div so new underscore underscore link and here it is going to have uh, an anchor with class of button which will not take us anywhere and here i will write view products save this and we will duplicate this box how many times let's check one two three four five six six times so one is already written 
two three four five six and we will change the image from one to two three four five six save this bag 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 and we can also see the buttons here okay and we need to change anything mm, no we don't need to change anything and this is the markup that we have written here and next we will style all of these okay so everything is same every of them is going to have a button of view products showing over them when we hover over them with this slight background color of primary color and then we will have some stylings so this was the markup and next up we will write the stylings all right so now let's style this new arrival section so first i'm going to select the new container itself so new container itself and again we are going to give it a row gap of 2 ram and then we have new underscore underscore box so this entire box here okay so one box so this box needs to be position relative and then again we'll apply display this this play flex justify content to be center so that our box will always be in center and let's give it a background color of where dash dash gray color and we will write overflow to be hidden overflow to be hidden so that the extra content will not be visible here and now when we will hover over them so new underscore underscore box being hover when it is hover then new underscore underscore link is going to be bottom zero okay so uh, there is some problem right here okay so let's check what is the problem so new container new box new box hover on new container new box on the new hover we have says bottom to be zero and now let's select the new link itself why do I forget this okay because we need to style this new link we need to hide this link okay so we'll write position absolute so that it will just move out of the document flow position absolute we will write bottom of minus 100 percent it will be just here okay and when we will hover over it it will just skew up so and width is going to be 100 percent 100 percent we don't want it to shrink and height will be 100 percent as well display is going to be flex and let me explain you why this width is 100 percent so width of the button is going to be 100 percent height is also 100 percent right now it might look something like this but let's write the justify content property to bring it into center and align items to center as well and then let's give it a background color of this is the rgba color so this is 215 comma 139 comma 227 comma 0.3 last one is the alpha channel okay so now when you hover over them it is visible okay so by default it is not visible when hover when we hover over it the box the link here new link has the bottom property of zero right now it is minus 100 percent which means right now when we are not hovering this right now at this stage that link is somewhere here but when we hover over it it will simply be zero which means a bottom of zero which means the the you can say the container will be visible here okay so the new link section will be visible here now let's just add a transition transition of 0.3 s if i save this okay so this is what we are end up having so let's check all right so we are almost done so let's see if we have anything else to counter here uh, we don't need to style this one already styled yeah so we are done with arrival section as well let's check what else have we got here and i think it is going to be let's not guess newsletter so here i will write news letter check sun in the stylings we will write news 
letter newsletter styling great so let's style let's write the markup of newsletter in next next video and then we will follow the styling of that section as well so see you there so now let's write the markup for newsletter section so again one more section that is going to have a class of section and the class of news letter itself and the id will be subscribed and now inside this we have a news container here okay so dot news underscore underscore contain container right news container and this is going to be a grid item so bd dash grid news container bd dash grid and then we have a section called news letter underscore underscore subscribe so div newsletter underscore underscore subscribe so this all section is okay so newsletter underscore underscore newsletter underscore underscore subscribe i think newsletter great and now here i will write a section title as to dot section dash title this title is going to be our newsletter and our newsletter here in the center and then following this we have this paragraph or anchor tag whatever i don't know i think this is paragraph so let me check it again yeah this is a paragraph this is not an anchor tag okay how do i know because when you hover over an anchor tag you get a cursor so this is an anchor tag let me show you if you hover over it you can see you are getting a cursor okay so now let's write a uh, p dot what it was section all i think or no no it's a paragraph so news news letter underscore underscore this description and this is the description i just copied it okay so feel free to copy and now here we will write come on here we will have an input here okay this is the form so form we are going to create a form and this is going to have a class of news letter underscore underscore in put the action is nowhere we are not sending any form right now inside this we are going to have an input colon text text with a class of news letter underscore underscore input we have two inputs so this one is form right so this one is newsletter underscore underscore form yes newsletter form newsletter input and name is nothing id is nothing class is this one and then we have an anchor tag with button and this button will take us nowhere and here we will say subscribe save this come here and we got our markup ready okay so this is the markup and following the markup we are going to style the newsletter in next video so see you there okay so now let's style our newsletter so first i'm going to select the newsletter itself and i'm going to give it a text align of center and now you can see all of the text is in center not the text but itself the all of the item itself in the center so first all right so now let's okay so now let's select the newsletter section so first i'm going to select this newsletter again all right so now we are going to style the newsletter section so first of all let's select newsletter itself and let's apply text align of center to it so text align center if i see all of the text is in center and now let's select the description so description so newsletter description where are you the final version this description here okay so newsletter description have a margin from bottom dash dash mb dash 2 let me see it again where dash dash mb dash 2 font size not inherit but we are going to have a small font size so dash dash a small font size save this we get a small font size and now let's change the color to where dash dash gray dash color so gray dash color is this gray definitely gray uh, no this is not gray so this is what 
डार्क कलर लाइट डार्क कलर और डार्क कलर लाइट सेव दिस वी गेट इट डार्क कलर लाइट नेक्स्ट वी विल सेलेक्ट द न्यूज लेटर फॉर्म इट सेल्फ सो न्यूज लेटर फॉर्म एंड न्यूज लेटर फॉर्म इज गोइंग टू बी डिस्प्लेड ग्रिड एंड आई विल शो यू वाई न्यूज लेटर डिस्प्ले ग्रिड सो सी दिस इज अ ग्रिड कंटेनर ओके सो न्यूज लेटर फॉर्म इज अ ग्रिड कंटेनर एंड सी हाउ नाउ वी कैन इन ऑर्डर टू क्रिएट रो एंड कॉलम वी कैन अप्लाई रो एंड कॉलम जी ग्रिड टेम्पलेट कॉलम एंड ग्रिड टेम्पलेट रो टू क्रिएट हाउ मेनी रो एंड हाउ मेनी कॉलम डू वी वॉन्ट नाउ लेट्स सी द फाइनल वर्जन वी वॉन्ट टू कॉलम्स सो वी हैव वन कॉलम फॉर द इनपुट एंड देन वन कॉलम फॉर बटन एंड रिमेंबर वेन वी लर्न अबाउट ग्रिड the parent was the grid and the items were the grid container so not con grid container but grid children item so now we can create some templates and col columns and rows in order to style the way we want so we want two columns first this column of 1 fr and then this column of 0.5 fr and we'll manipulate to see how the how the how the width behaves when we apply different values to it okay so let's create column so gtc the template column no we don't want to repeat we just want one fr for one fr for this input and 0.5 fr 0.5 fr for this button here and now you can see we are already here okay so if i decrease this to 0.3 we are having 0.3 so let's go with 0.5 fr and now let's create a column gap column dash gap of 1 rem and we we did not have column c o l u m n dash gap so okay c o l u m n column gap of 1 rem and we are having the column gap of 1 rem and the button is little bit more large so let's go with 3 now we get it okay so column 3 fr 1 and 3 fr now let's select the input itself so news let's copy this where are you news letter underscore underscore input so news letter underscore underscore input and this input is going to be outline none right now if you click you can see the blue line but now if i write border none now if you click nothing happens and now mm, let's give it a background color of because we have a background color here can you see interior email after interior email we have a background color and we forget to write what mm, place holder so let's write a place holder enter your email save this enter your email and now let's write a gray color is this gray this is the gray color okay so where dash dash gray dash color we have that color now okay and now uh, let's give it a padding quickly so new letter is going to input so we have a padding of 0 from top bottom and 1.5 rem from left right and we get it and let's see if anything else is left so newsletter underscore underscore input is already selected newsletter underscore underscore input is done button is by default selected because we have this class already create above and which is resulting in creation of this button okay so that's it this was new newsletter this is the markup and this is the styling for the newsletter so everything is aligned to center margin we have a margin from bottom so if i comment this out there is no margin from bottom for description so let's get it again font size is small font size color is color dark color light this is display grid so this is display grid this form container is a grid and we have two columns for input we have one fractional in unit free space fr is free space and for anchor we have 0.5 0.3 free space and then we have a column gap of 1 rem here column gap of 1 rem so if you increase the 1 rem to 3 rem see the column gap increased okay so just get back to 1 rem and that's it okay so outline none border none so now if you click we cannot see the outline but if you just comment this out now you can see the outline okay so let's get it back so that's it this was our later section this was new later section next up what do we have next up so this logo here so now let's style this logo again we are going to create that column and this time we will also create the row so see you there let's write the markup for logo section or sponsor section this one so again uh, section this is going to be a spon 
search a sponsors and then this is going to be a section and inside this we are going to have a div with a sponsors underscore underscore container and then we have the class of bd dash grid as well so after this we have a sponsors logo so a spawn search underscore underscore logo a sponsors underscore underscore logo and inside this we are going to have an image a sponsors image a sponsors i am g not h but i am g and the source is going to be i am g slash logo one dot png and we are going to repeat this four times two three four logo one logo two logo three logo four let's see the change okay we are here now let's style this one so first we are going to write the comment not here we are going to write the comment here sponsors and let's select the sponsors container sponsors container itself dot sponsors container and here we are going to create column yes this time we are going to repeat we want to create two columns one of same fractional unit okay so same free space so here you can see we have two columns one two and with a row as well by the way this is not a row we have just created two columns okay and these things are pretty much clear to you right now so now let's write a row gap row gap we want a row gap of two ram let's see and okay the change is not applied right now i don't know why a sponsors container a sponsors container section a sponsors container section looks like we are forgetting something and mm, sponsors section let me just cross check again a sponsors logo let's write okay we forget to give it a padding I just sometimes forget some stylings that we need to apply it okay so padding 1.5 RAM it's completely normal okay still you cannot see but that's completely fine for now repeat just like this repeat to FR and now we get it okay we don't need to have a space here you cannot provide a space it will not work okay now it is working okay so now let's select the sponsors logo a sponsors logo the sponsors logo is going to be a display flex item flex item and we are going to just justify everything to center so let me show you a sponsors logo is a flex item and this one is flex children okay this is the flex parent and this is the flex child so a sponsors logo is going to be in center and we are here in the center now let's select a sponsors a sponsors logo image sponsors underscore underscore logo i am g so every image that is inside a sponsors logo is going to have a width of 80 px a very little width and we are going to filter it so filter opacity 70 percent now what is this filter you don't know about this so filter allow us to like provide a filter to it now you can see that the opacity is decreased so remember when we hover over it see how this color is not the actual color we have no color with this okay but we applied an alpha channel so that we can decrease you can say the to apply some dark shadow over it okay so that's how we can do that okay so filter opacity filters the property and opacity is the value that is uh, that has also a value of 70 percent and that's how the opacity is applied to it okay so by default if you do it 90 you can see now it is more black so if you do 40 see it is barely visible okay so let's go with 70 again and now let's when we hover over them we want opacity of zero so a sponsors logo and then img hover we want the width to be 80 percent same width and the filter to be none okay so rather than saying opacity zero just say filter none and now when you hover and looks like width is 80 pixel not percentage so px yeah save this and now we get it okay so our logo section is also complete next up we have footer i think let's check the final version yeah next up we have this footer so now we will write the footer section so footer and see how we did not write the footer inside a section okay 
but what we did is that looks like I made some mistake mm, see okay so I'm making that like oh, I I did made a mistake so this main should not have been here this new arrival should have been still inside the main so this is very basic mistake this is not a great mistake okay so from here we have started our main section come on little more yeah from here we have started our main section so everything should go still inside main so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cut this main and I will request you to do the same and if you are just following the same thing then it's completely fine okay and paste everything here okay so everything is inside main section and now once the main is end we have this footer section so let me show you so everything is in a main section okay so main by the way main is not a section okay main is a semantic tag in HTML so everything is inside main and after once the main ends we have this footer start here okay so now everything should go inside the footer we will write the footer inside its footer semantic tag all right so mm, is there anything else no so this was just a quick mistake that I just realized and I just fixed it okay so everything should go inside main and once everything ends like we just designed everything in the main part here now we will move forward to design the footer and the footer should go inside the footer tag okay so we have a uh, semantic tag for footer so everything is inside footer so next step we will write the markup for footer and then we will uh, style the footer okay so now let's write the markup for our footer so we are done with newsletter and sponsor section we will now write the markup for footer so first let's give this footer a class of footer and now inside footer we are going to create a footer container so a div footer underscore underscore container that is also going to be a grid parent and inside this we will create footer box so footer box this one footer box okay so all of them are inside footer box so now what is inside footer box the first thing is we have the title and then we have a paragraph and then we have two images so the title is s3 this is a section title or section let's see if we, okay so this is styled differently than the section title okay so section title is styled differently and this is styled differently so let's give it a title of footer underscore underscore title and the title is that shoppinger s h o p i n g e r shoppinger and then we have a paragraph that is footer description footer underscore underscore description or let's check product store mm, it is product a store so this one is the title and this is the deal so footer underscore underscore deal and this is pro Ducts a store this is not capital so products a store save this shoppinger products a store great and after this one we have we have these two images okay so footer underscore underscore store image so uh, img dot img dot footer underscore underscore footer underscore underscore i what a store s t o r e footer underscore underscore image so the image is img slash a store the img slash footer store one i hope yeah footer store one so this is footer store one dot png and then footer store two dot png so footer store one dot png footer store two dot png so now after this we have one more box so dot footer underscore underscore box and inside this we have an h3 that is also footer underscore underscore title and this time the title is explore so this one is explore so e x p l o r e i tried to copy it but i could not copy okay so an unordered list so after this we have an unordered list now we don't have to name this one as a we don't have to give any class to this unordered list okay so li and inside li we are going to have an anchor tag 
that will not take us anywhere so far and obviously we need to give it a class so we will give it a class of footer underscore underscore link and now here I will say home and then not five but only four home and then this one is free features features so f e a t u r e h features and this is new this is subscribed subscribe and after this we have one more footer box so footer box footer box one more footer box and this time this is our services okay so let's copy this I have successfully copied this so one more footer underscore underscore box and h3 dot footer underscore underscore title our services and after our services we have again an ordered list and an ordered list with some links okay so first we will create an an ordered list inside this we have an ally with a with footer underscore underscore link class this is not going to take us anywhere this one is pricing free shipping cashback subscribe so pricing shipping C A C A S H cash back and last one is subscribe so subs subscribe let's check yeah we are almost done and then after subscribe we have one more footer box dot footer underscore underscore box and let's check what else have we got here this is contact us file okay so we have just uh, contact us section that is left to create so here I'm going to write one more s3 dot footer underscore underscore title contact con contact us and this u is capital contact us and then we have some social links I guess yeah social links so this social link is going to be an anchor tag which on getting clicked which on being clicked will take us to the different social icons which we have here so for Facebook Twitter and then uh, Facebook what is this Inst in Insta yeah Facebook Insta and Twitter so this is going to be an anchor tag which will not take us anywhere but here uh, we will give it a class of uh, what footer social yeah so let's give it a class of footer underscore underscore social and this anchor tag is going to be an icon and that icon is from box icon so first we have Facebook let's see if I'm right Facebook Insta Twitter so let me expand this so that I can copy it so search for Facebook click this one Facebook square and you don't have to select this one you have to select the font copy this one come here and paste inside this now let's see we get Facebook and let's copy this one three times and we need Instagram and Twitter so after Facebook we have Insta Insta alternate again font copy this one and just duplicate not duplicate but just replace this one and hopefully we'll see the Instagram as well Facebook Insta and last one should be Twitter 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 copy this one and replace this one with the copy text right now and we get it so Facebook Insta and Twitter so now and after this let's see our markup is complete and we have something else here so let me just minimize this one okay so we have this copyright text so after div after div inside footer we will write a copyright text and that copyright text I'm just going to simply copy from here so just copy this and here I will write P with a class of footer underscore underscore copy and this one so copyright all rights reserved and this is the copyright text that I have here so yeah we are getting done okay so we are almost done the next thing that we have left here is that we will style this footer to create something like this one okay so that is coming up next in the next video alright so now let's style the footer so we can have the footer 
same as our final version okay so now i will select the footer itself first the footer itself let me show you the footer itself should have a background color of where dash dash gray color save this and we get it after this we want to change the color to be dash dash white color now i'm just changing this for uh you can say <laughs> the color is changed here so you cannot see right now but we are just changing because we don't have to do it later okay so we just change the color next what we'll do is that or there is some problem here okay so this should be dark not gray and now it worked now next we will select the footer container itself okay so footer container i will give it a row gap of come on not regap so row dash gap of 1.5 ram and now let me show you why so see this div is a grid container okay so all of these are parent so not parent but grid children so that's why we have applied the grid container a row gap of 1.5 ram so that we can have a row gap of 1.5 ram so if i write 10.5 ram now we are having a uh, row gap of 10.5 ram okay so pretty much same as we did it in the earlier section okay so you remember maybe so margin now bottom let's give it a margin from bottom of four i need a semicolon here margin dash bottom of four and then after margin dash bottom of four we will select the footer title let's select the footer title and now let's style the footer title itself so the footer title should also have a margin from bottom and this is going to be dash dash mb dash one save this okay it is not visible but i hope it works okay so let's see mm, here and here we are having some difference here okay we'll counter this after footer title we have footer deal so footer title we have footer deal this one the section uh, which has this text here okay so footer deal so footer title has the margin so if i increase this yeah we can see okay so margin one how much margin do we need here three one one okay so footer deal should have a margin bottom of two let's check the final version yeah two so we want let me show you again so this is the footer deal it should have a margin of bottom of what one ram as well so footer deal should have a margin bottom mb dash dash one if i save this let's check uh we have little more room so two we get it okay so two ram after footer deal we'll select the footer store itself so dot footer underscore underscore a store as store which is the footer store this one is the footer store this the uh, you can what you can say images so footer store width just let's change the width because how it is automatically selected so width is 100 pixel and we are done so after footer store we'll select the footer link so dot footer underscore underscore link and footer link and footer underscore underscore social so footer underscore underscore link and then footer underscore underscore social both of them should have a color of dark color okay so dash dash dark dash color let's see dark color dark color light yes dark color light okay so dark color light so footer underscore underscore link let's write some hover effect link colon hover we want the text decoration to be underlined so text decoration underline something like this so text decoration underline okay so text decoration underline and after this we'll select the footer social itself footer social let's increase the font size not this one is but font dash size to be what 1.3 ram font size to be 1.3 ram margin right margin right where dash dash mb dash one and we have the footer social is not visible here why footer underscore underscore social let's check 
डॉट फूट अंडरस्कोर अंडरस्कोर लिंक फूट अंडरस्कोर स्कोर सोशल एफ डब्ल्यू टी आर सो लेट्स चेक द मार्कअप फूटर एफ डब्ल्यू टी आर फूटर अंडरस्कोर अंडरस्कोर वॉक्स टाइटल सोशल दिस शुड हैव इन विजुअल एज वेल फूटर सोशल इज नॉट विजुअल सो फूटर सोशल लेट्स गिव दैम अ क्लास ऑफ दिस वन एज वेल सो इफ आई सेव नाव इट इज स्टिल नॉट विजुअल वाई आई ओके सी समाइम इट हैपन्स वेन यू लोड सम एक्सटर्नल रिसोर्सेज यू नीड टू रिफ्रेस दिस सो इफ आई कमेंट दिस आउट रिफ्रेस एंड इट गेट इट ओके सो आई गेट इट सो समाइम यू नीड टू रिफ्रेस सम एक्सटर्नल रिसोर्सेज वेन एवर यू कॉपी दैम फ्रॉम सम लिंक एंड दिज लिंक्स आर कमिंग फ्रॉम अगे एंड इट वॉन्ट सो दिज लिंक्स आर कमिंग फ्रॉम बॉक्स आइकन्स एंड बॉक्स आइकन्स आर एन एक्सटर्नल रिसोर्स सो लास्ट वन विल कॉपी द फोटो अंडरस्कोर अंडरस्कोर कॉपी टेक्स्ट इट सेल्फ ओके ओके सो नाव लेट्स क्विकली स्टाइल द फोटर कॉपी टेक्स्ट एज वेल ओके सो फर्स्ट आई एम गोइंग टू गिव इट अ बॉर्डर फ्रॉम टॉप वन पिक्सल सॉलिड वेर डैश डैश डार्क कलर डैश लाइट सेव दिस वन एंड वी गॉट दिस बॉर्डर ऑफ टॉप एंड देन वी वॉन्ट अ पैडिंग फ्रॉम ऑल साइड ऑफ थ्री रैम सेव दिस वी गॉट द पैडिंग ऑफ थ्री रैम एंड आफ्टर थ्री रैम वी विल पुट द टेक्सट अलाइन टू सेंटर टेक्स्ट अलाइन सेंटर एंड आफ्टर दिस वील चेंज द कलर टू बी वेर वॉट डैश डैश डार्क कलर लाइट आई गेस डार्क कलर लाइट लेट्स चेक येस डार्क कलर लाइट एंड देन वी विल रिड्यूस द साइज सो फॉन्ट साइज इज स्मॉल सो फॉन्ट डैश लेट्स राइट फॉन्ट डैश साइज टू बी वेर डैश डैश अ स्मॉल font size if i save this we get it okay so if you just delete this one see by default we have a font size of great so now write font a small font size and we will get a small dash font dash size save this a small font size okay so we have created the footer which means we have created the complete mobile section now in next section we will see how we can expand this to create the same website for the desktop section because right now it it looks it does not look quite very good okay so next up fully responsive section is coming up okay so see you there right, so now we are going to style our website for this viewport here okay so if you see the final version for the mobile looks something like this that we already created but if we go a little bit up the breakpoint is not very responsive okay so we are going to create a media query for this viewport so here style in the style.css section i will create a media query so media all the way in the last okay so we normally write not normally but we generally write media query after all of this all of the code is finished okay so media is screen and min width okay so min dash width of what 768 pixel what it means it means that this styling will be applied to this the properties that we will define here will be applied to a screen width above 768 pixel okay so the screen width should be at least 768 pixel or above in order for this styles to be applied on this okay so the first thing that we need to do is that we are going to do some reset so we will write the body should have a margin of zero none and now here let me show you and this is the final version and this is our version so in our version we have little less space here okay for the section title here section all here and if you see the final version let me show you the final version we have little more space here okay so we have little more space here so first we are going to add some space to that so section dash all like margin bottom and let's increase the margin bottom to dash dash mb dash dash mb dash 4 if i save this refresh and yeah we get it okay so now we have little more space so next let's see the nav bar so the nav bar is little thick here not thick but small and this nav bar is little large so see the comparison of nav bar okay so let's increase the nav bar here okay 
now let's increase the nav bar so i will select the nav and i will give this height nav bar so we have a height of calc where so the header height header height plus one ram okay so we just increase the header height to one ram that would end up becoming four ram now this nav bar is here we want to push that nav bar somewhere here okay so that's why it is, it is here it is coming here so now let's quickly put that here as well so um what we'll do we'll select the nav underscore underscore menu so where are you let's select nav underscore underscore menu so now let's select nav underscore underscore menu and if i give it a margin from left of auto it will automatically be positioned here okay so it is automatically positioned here now all of this icon is not showing because somehow i just got rid of the internet connection that's why it is not showing that's completely fine in your case it would be showing here okay now after this we will select the nav underscore underscore list itself and we'll make it a flex nav list display to be flex and now all of them are coming next to each other okay nav underscore underscore list and after nav underscore underscore list the nav underscore underscore item itself and let's give it a margin of left where dash dash what mb dash 4 so dash dash mb dash 4 we want a margin of left great we get it and then we will apply an additional style of margin bottom we don't want any margin on it so margin dash bottom 0 if i save this we get it so almost there margin bottom of zero now what we'll do is that the toggle menu should not be shown so if i refresh this is the cart which you cannot see right now so i'm extremely sorry for that because the internet connection is very very low that's why it is not showing up here okay and this is the toggle menu okay so if you click then the toggle button will come up so see it is working so which means we don't need here okay so on this screen we don't need this toggle menu so we will just copy the toggle where are you toggle nav underscore underscore toggle and we will say display none so display none just get out of here and we got rid of the toggle menu okay and after we got rid of toggle menu we will select the home underscore underscore container itself so this one home underscore underscore container which contains this item here okay and we will make this container a height of 100 vh okay so uh where are you the final version home underscore underscore container the height should be 100 vh so let's see what change does it bring so what is that okay so this is the home underscore underscore container that's why i was getting confused so right now it has a height of what let's check or or just write here okay so just let me just write the height and if any change will be bring brought i will explain that to you so height 100 vh i want an accurate height here okay so we get it okay and somehow i got lost of this style here so the image is little less here okay so now let's give that data not data but image so should we just select the image itself and image but after home container we have the home data itself now if you think that this image why this image is shortened because of the height 100 vh okay and the height of image is automatically collected according to the container okay so this image here is inside the container which has a height of 100 vh and the image was automatically calculated if you remember when we applied the style of auto height auto okay so now let's select the home data itself okay so home data so after home container i will select the home data and i will give home data a padding of zero we want no padding and i will give it a height of max content so max content is a property that will have the height of the maximum content it has okay so see it has the height and it, it all just shrinked up here so you don't have to worry much but if i write align self align self to center it will just come to center okay so now it is aligning aligning itself to the center it all would be very much clear to you because uh, we have done all of this in the grid section itself okay so not much confusion right here so align self center Th this text here is align self to the center okay because the parent is itself grid now let's select the home underscore underscore title 
home underscore underscore title let's give it a line height of not this one but line height of mm, point eight point eight point eight yeah looks like something is changed and let's give the letter a spacing of one point five ram we get it okay so line height and line height and letter spacing and now let's select the home underscore underscore image and let's set a width to it so home underscore underscore width is going to be width w i d t s width and here i will say 378 pixel so this is calculated okay so width is going to be 378 pixel okay so looks like we have done some mistake here home underscore underscore title is 0 0.8 mm, 1.5 ram uh is there anything that is not so we have little we have little more line spacing here so if i just decrease this one still we are having some issues so if i decrease the line height no line height should be eight home underscore underscore title should be letter spacing letter dash spacing 1.5 ram let's go with 5 ram okay we'll fix this we'll refactor our app we'll fix this okay so first let's go with this so home underscore underscore img so home underscore underscore img image to be 360 370 pixel now you can play with this okay you can change this one and you can write some of your own you can say you can just decrease the width you can increase the width and it will reflect here okay so i'm still not sure why it is not it is happening like this but we'll definitely going to do this we'll definitely do this one okay so we'll refactor this and we'll check what is happening here so now we are going to select the collection container itself and where are you the collection container so this is the collection container which we are going to this is a grid so what we are going to do is that we are going to create grid template column and yes repeat i'm going to create two column of one fr so let me show you and we don't need a space here okay so see all of them are two fr right now it is stacking but here we have two column both of them of same unit okay so two fr so two fr and then let's give it a row as well so gt gtr where is r grid template row no repeat but one fr if i save this let's come here yeah we get it okay so grid template row of one fr so if i write three fr we are almost there so only one fr okay so grid template column two column of one fr grid template row of one fr okay now let's select the collection box itself so collection box collection box so the collection box so these two data okay so the collection box needs to have a padding of Mm, 0.5 ram 0.5 ram and 3 ram and 0 so 0.5 ram 3 ram and 0 if i save this we get it so we are having some spaces here so 0.5 ram if i comment this out hmm, we are losing the style so now we got that back okay so collection underscore underscore box collection underscore underscore box had some padding around this so after this what we are going to select what do we have collection box collection image itself so collection image so after this i will select the collection image itself and i'm going to give it a width of 130 px and 130 pixel what if i just go with 30 pixel very small hmm, no i want 130 pixel so i will go with 130 pixel okay and after this we will select the feet shared underscore underscore container and feature underscore, underscore container and then we have a sponsored container let me show you featured underscore underscore container then we have a sponsored container as well where are you mm, sponsors sponsors let me just find out feature underscore underscore container uh, sponsors because when we want them to grow where are you uh, here when we want them to grow we want all of them to become a uh, four column layout okay so that's why right now it's stacked on top of each other now four column layout so featured container 
and after feature container dot a sponsors container just get rid of this a sponsors container and then the footer as well so dot footer okay so footer so footer underscore underscore container all of them needs to have a grid column grid template column of we are going to create four column each one being one frax free free space and if i see here mm, something is wrong what happened okay so we need to create the container to be uh, grid template column as well so new container so if i will go down let me check it so by default we are not having anything like that so featured container fe okay so this is featured featured let me check what else we have so footer container great footer container a sponsors container a sponsors container and then we have we have where are you the featured container somewhere here so featured container f e a t u t f e a t u r t featured container okay so now we get it okay so the featured container is something like this and we want to style these two like this okay and now when we go to the highest level see this box is styled differently okay so we are not going to style that anymore and we'll take care of this one as well okay so for now we just want the feature container sponsors and footer container so after footer container we have offer data o f f e r underscore underscore data the offer data should have a padding of um, 5 ram from top and bottom and 0 from left and right okay so offer data this one offer data so where are you offer data mm. swap now a special offer this one okay so if i show you again decreased padding and now increased padding okay okay just come here decreased padding let me show you again where are you yeah you can notice the change here okay so that's what happening here and after this we will select the new underscore underscore container as well we have a new underscore underscore container and we will create the grid column obviously repeat and this time i'm going to go with three and one fr let me show you what do i mean so new underscore underscore container new underscore underscore container this one so new arrival so new arrival okay so right now we have the new arrival here and we have new arrival here as well and if i comment this out all of them are stacked on top of each other and now when we created the template column all of them are having a three column okay so three all of them so six items we have so all of them are taking equal space okay so now after new underscore underscore container we are going to create the newsletter form let's check yeah newsletter form okay yes so news letter form let's give it a width of 600 pixel so that we can put them put them into the center so let me show you see this is in center okay so this is in center and this is not in center so with 600 pixel margin 0 auto and now this is also in center okay so both of them are in center and where are you after newsletter underscore underscore form what else do we got let's check did we style the footer no footer container is not styled okay so let's style footer container so dot footer container and let's give it a padding of 2 ram from top and bottom and 0 and now we get it so padding of 2 ram from left and from top and bottom and 0 from left and right and somehow i cannot see the contact us and because this is a logo okay so this is a logo that's why we are not able to see it because the internet connection is obviously shut down so i'm extremely sorry for that again okay so now let's see how it sees and we have something to cover up, cover up here as well and let me tell you why it is happening because we cannot see this nav bar here that's why our menu bar is shrinking here okay so by default it shows something like this and then we have this one and obviously we are going to refactor this but now if i expand 
we need one more styling for this one okay so we are going to write that styling as well so after this um, let's write a media query for media media a screen and min width of this time 10 24 px so a huge so the larger desktop and just change the bd grid the grid and automatically selected margin dash left of i will give the margin left of auto so by default every grid has just going to have a margin okay from left as well as from right as well so margin dash right we don't have to do anything okay see we did not change anything we just said margin left and right of auto and all of the all of the items is in center okay so that's it so this is what we have to do here and now let's see what else we have to do so home underscore underscore home underscore underscore data so every data that has a, this class here we want the padding of 7 ram so 7 ram so let me show you home underscore underscore data where are you home underscore underscore data let me just make a search home underscore 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 data so this one so home section underscore underscore data here and we have a padding of 7 ram and let's go with home underscore underscore img as well and we'll just give it a right of 15 percent so if i see this is the desktop version for this one and this is the desktop version for this one so that's how we have done it okay we just have one thing left we just have to counter how this fashion is increasing here but not here so we'll take a look at this one in the next section when we will refactor some of the stuffs okay so that's how we have write written the media query okay so see you in the next section with a uh, refactoring tools all right so now let me show you the silly mistake that i just made here okay so you can spot the difference between these two so the header height is completely fine here because this is the final version and in our version we have this too much line height and letter spacing not line height letter spacing and the nav bar is also little smaller okay so the problem is that see the letter spacing should be just 0.5 rem not 1.5 rem okay so now it works and then here what i have done is that i've just i haven't provided a space here okay so if i provide a space here save this and now let's see we are back so this is the final version and this is our version okay so you can see this is how we have created our website so this was very silly mistake that i was doing here okay so now let's if i expand this hmm, we get it if i shrink this everything is working so let's go to featured let's go to new let's go to subscribed and let's check the hover effect is working and text decoration underscore underline dot underscore is working completely perfectly and let's expand this and let's click the home section it bring the, it brought it to brought us to home featured new subscribed and this working perfectly okay so feature okay so features it should have been featured so footer 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 where are you footer uh, footer featured feature f e a t u r e d featured and now it is featured great so we have almost not almost but we are done so we have this nav bar here and this beautiful uh, nav links here that takes us to different section we have this button here this lady shopping and then we have these two backpacks here man woman we have this hover effect here this special offer and looks like hi somehow the right arrow is not shown here so let's check why so offer section swap now so let's go to offer section offer section and swap now here i should have right ampersand r a r r so right arrow and now we got it okay so swap now ampersand r a r r so okay so everything is all right so we have marked finished to our front end project we have almost learned everything html css and we have also created this beautiful website we are going to host our website now so by the end of this section you are going to have a link that you can proudly share with your friends and family and can tell them to visit the link so that they can see the website that you have developed so for this we are going to use a platform that is called github for now you don't have to think too much about github as you will explore github in details in the coming up section for now 
you just have to know that github is a version management tool in software development and coming to the related point it will allow us to host a static website free of cost which means we can host our static website on this platform what is a static website any website without a database now all you have to do is to create an account on it if you don't have one so click here sign up and sign up for an account on github and once you will create the account i will see you in the next video with following up lectures now we are going to host our website so this is the interface that i am having once we signed up for github so you just have to follow my steps click create repository and right in here write a name of the repository i am going to write swappinger swappinger and now create repository and once the repository is clicked click to this link which says upload an existing file and then you can see i have the starter file not a starter file but the final file the website that we just coded here okay so this is the file and then you have to open the file and you have to drag the content here now notice you don't have to drag this entire file here okay open the file and just select every content here and now drag that here and let's close this one it will take time it will take time related to the file size okay so in our case it is not going to take too much time so we'll it we will wait for that and once the file upload on uh, file uploading is done we will just commit the changes okay so let's wait for the files to be uploaded uploading 14 of 24 we are almost done and then we will commit change and then i will show you how we can host our website so right now it is on our local server once github will push the code we'll have a link that you can share with your family and friends so we are almost done 20 21 22 okay mm, yeah we are done so now we will commit changes it will take few time to process it says processing your files this may take a few minutes to complete okay it will not take much time it will take very less time since our our account is also new but that doesn't matter it still takes time okay so okay so whenever you create a file it will take time so here you can see it also says on the title processing your files so whenever you will upload some file it will process your files because github does some of the internal things behind okay now from here you have to click index.html go to settings and now navigate to the bottom let me expand this you don't have to understand any of this right now just navigate to bottom until you find the github pages section here we have the github pages section now from here select main okay click this input here this select tag here and now click main and now click save and once you will click save it will give you and uh, it will give you a link so if you navigate to the same page right now see it says your site is ready to be published at this one but if you will open this it will not show up right here because okay it showed uh, if i refresh this now it says mm, your site is public its uh, site is ready to be published at okay because our file was relatively very low that's why it quickly showed up okay but if your file was relatively large it will it will not host you because github does some internal things behind okay so once that thing is done it will load your see how it is loading very slowly because github does github does some backend work for this file it does not straight away host your host your files so right now we are having a link you can copy this link and you can share with share it with your friends and families okay so that's it for this section and now we are going to start our javascript section okay so let's get straight to the javascript section